Hello everybody, welcome to another StarCityGames.com unboxing video. I'm CVM, joined here with my Versus Video co-star, BBD. What's up? And we're going to be opening something special. Uh, we have Modern Masters 2015. So this is the second incarnation in the Modern Masters series, a supplemental product that Wizards created to kind of breathe life back into the format uh, modern, which is something that they've been pushing yeah. uh, not only recently, but they're just seems like they're going to continue to push the format as we move on to the life of Magic. And there are some sweet cards in these packs. Yeah, it's basically a chance for Wizards to be able to uh, make the price of Modern cheaper so mm -hmm. more people can get into it, to make it accessible to a lot of players. Uh, like One of the huge issues with Legacy is that a lot of the old cards are on the reserve list. They can never be reprinted, and the price of Legacy is never going to really go down. And as we've seen, they've just continued to steadily go up. Yeah. I mean, Underground Sea is still over $300. Volcanic Island's over $300. Tarmogoyf was breaching the $200 mark, but this will be the third printing of it. Uh, even though it is a legacy staple, it's also a modern staple. Yep. So hopefully we see here that something like this will continue to make the format a little more accessible on, on the price point. Uh, and... I mean, I, I hope so. Modern's great. I enjoy playing it. Yeah, I really enjoy Modern as well, so I'm, I'm really happy to, that they keep printing these Modern Master sets, and hopefully over time it'll make the format like really easy for new players to get into. Now, I'm actually really excited to open this uh, for a couple reasons. First off, the packs are like $11. Yeah. So those are pretty expensive packs to be opening, but the reason being is not only are there super expensive cards in them, like Tarmogoyf, you know, $150, Dark Confidant, Vendillion Click, uh, you know, both of those have been around $100 in their lifetime. But the special thing about Modern Masters is every pack has a foil in it. Yeah, so we are guaranteed to hit as many foils as there are packs. Absolutely, and you can get anywhere from a sweet mythic rare or a regular rare foil, even through commons or uncommons like Remand or Lightning Bolt, which are still fairly expensive. So. And then you can even go down to like other commons and uncommons like Rusted Relic. Yep. So, uh, <laughs> so we're really rolling the dice. Let's go ahead and jump right in and uh, start busting some of these packs. All right, so let's go ahead and get going in this Modern Masters 2015. We're see, gonna see if you can crack that box without cutting. Yeah, cutting we're your gonna finger try and open. be safe here and not cut myself when we open it. Uh, so far, it looks like you are just a, a, a master. A master. You are a modern pack opening master. Now, one of the unique things about Modern Masters is that we have this new environment-friendly, recyclable packaging. So we're not, I feel really weird saying crack a pack when we're yeah, pulling we're, a tab. We're gonna tab a pack. <laughs> we're yeah. gonna tab a pack. So let's go ahead and jump into our first pack. All right. And we, so. we, but what I'm gonna do is the first, for each pack, I'm gonna look at the foil first. So it's gonna be right, right here on the back. start with the bust. We've got Tezzeret's Gambit. Okay. It's not worth a whole bunch. Uh, although it is worth something, it's a very, very good casual card. It is. It's, uh, it's a very unique here. card. So it is. Uh, the Phyrexian mana is one of the mechanics that they brought back in uh, Modern Masters uh, for the second go round. You'll see cards like uh, Gutshot, Apostle's Blessing. Unfortunately, the most important Phyrexian mana spell is not in the set. So that's Gataxian Probe. Oh, I was going to say Mental Misstep because it's not legal. <laughs> that's true. <laughs> so let's go ahead and see what else we have here in the pack. So our rare is Midnight Banshee, okay. which is something that you might know about playing in the Lorwyn, Lorwyn era. I did. I have seen some Midnight Banshees in my time. And this card is actually just very good. It is. Yeah. <laughs> Not only is it a 5-5 five, five for 6 with wither, wither, but it has an ability that's just going to take over the game. It's kind of the opposite of Twilight Shepherds, basically what it is. Definitely. Uh, going through the rest of the pack, we can see Kozilex Predator. Uh, so there is... Uh, the Eldrazi are back, so yep. we do have a chance to open something like Emrakul or Ulamog. But it also gives us these really sweet cards um, that give you the Eldrazi spawn. So Rise of the Eldrazi Limited was a very skill-intensive format, in my opinion. And I really like that they're bringing back this type of strategy for Modern Masters. Uh, I didn't like Rise of the Eldrazi Limited. <laughs> I think it was probably one of my least favorite limited formats of all time. So... Uh... I'm, I'm, I'm on the, the negative end of, of that spectrum. However, I do actually really like Nest Invader and Kozilex Predator and cards like that anyway, so that's, that's cool, but. Fair enough. Uh, we do have Nameless Inversion, so there is a little bit of a changeling theme in the I format. I love Nameless Inversion. Uh, Stoic Rebuttal, so Metalcraft is a returning theme in the format. 
Uh, we have Plague Rusalka. Uh, so it's a spirit, which is relevant because uh, this the the ar arcane and spirit spells are back yeah. in Modern Masters. So even though this wasn't from uh, you know that Kamigawa era, wait, was this? No, it was from it was uh, Ravnica, Ravnica, right? Yeah. yeah. So it wasn't it? It was in that same standard, but it wasn't in Kamigawa. So it's not in the Kamigawa era. It still fits that spirit theme. I guess Convoke is back, but they didn't reprint Court of Calling because that's already in M15. Yep. Uh, so now we get to some of the important cards. So we have Frogmite. Uh, affinity, like the Affinity style uh, decks were in the original Modern Masters, but they're also in Modern Masters 2 uh, because you know, Mox Opal's reprinted. There is an Arcbound Ravager, um, but you do have like Frog Knight, Somber Hover Guard, Court Homunculus. So like the blue white affinity deck, from what I've seen and heard, is actually very, very good in Modern Masters. Yeah, I mean it's a free two two. Like a two two is not an impressive creature, but when you're not spending any mana on it, I mean it's it's a pretty powerful card in that regard. Especially since Metalcraft is back. So you can go Frog Might Stoke Rebuttal. Get him. Counter Game. all the spells. Uh, the Carews are also back. Uh, the Ravnica Bounce Lands. Very near and dear to my heart since I do play Amulet Bloom and, yeah. uh, and uh, Modern. Is, is the card underneath that a uh, Slayer Stronghold? Would no, be, okay. but it, it would be cool if it was. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Bounce Lands are back, uh, which definitely help with any of the five color strategies, uh, which from what I've seen, there are a lot of colorless fixing in the set, which makes the five color strategies very good. Alloy Mirror is a common instead of an uncommon. Wayfarer's Bobble is a common. They also have Rampant Growth. So there definitely is a lot of five color fixing. Uh, Rootkin Ally, and then Restless Apparition. So neither of those are very impressive, but I would play them if I needed to. Sure. So let's just jump in the next one and see what we get after we untab it. All right. <laughs> so yeah. we'll get rid of our token, and our foil is Aether, Aether Snipe. Snipe. I know a lot about Aether Snipe. I have definitely had my Aethers sniped many times. Yeah. So. Card is very good. Uh, another <laughs> one of the sub themes I guess that's in this uh, Modern Masters is like the elementals with Evoke, Mold Drifter, All Star. Yeah. Really not much to say. The cards are just great limited magic cards. I think Evoke is one of the best keywords of all time. I like it a lot. Yeah, it's it's just a, it's just a delight to play with Evoke cards. It's really fun. Yeah, cards that allow you to play magic at like different stages of the game and do different do different things are things that I really enjoy and decks that are able to play magic when their mana screwed and play magic when they hit their lands I really like that style of magic yeah me too that, that's why I really love things like evoke kicker etc where you're not locked into uh, you know just having the six mana spell it's a three mana spell or a six mana spell yep uh, like in the case of like aether snipe or mold drifters a three or a five so you know if you're missing land drops you can divination if you're hitting them you can divination with a two two flyer yep all right so let's see what rare we got <clears throat> There he is. Ghost Cancel of Orzova. It's not Ovzadat. It is not the Ovzadat, but that is certainly a card that is very near and dear to my heart. Uh, in fact, I started playing Magic during Time Spiral Ravnica Standard, mm -hmm. uh, and my very first deck I built was a black-white deck with Ghost Council and Sacred Mesas and things like that. I'm not going to say it was a great deck. It was, it was definitely more of a black-white cards I owned deck, but <laughs> uh, I really love the black-white cards, and Ghost Council was probably my favorite card from that era, so... It's Ghost great. Council is actually just a great magic card. It, it was is, in yeah. one of you know the format defining standard card or standard decks during the the Ravnica Kamigawa time frame, uh, the hand in hand deck yep. using Hand of Honor and the black version. I don't remember the name of it. Um, I mean, but to be honest, Cruelty, like right? any creature deck, since you could play four GTAs, was just kind of busted. Yeah, that is, that is true. <laughs> All right, let's see what else we got here. Uh, Nest Invader. Bone Splinters is just a very solid removal spell. Seems like it combos pretty well with the uh, Eldrazi spawn as well. It does. Uh, Court Homunculus, a uh, key piece to uh, the Affinity Aggressive decks. Old Gnarled Pack. Uh, there is a little bit of a Bloodthirst uh, theme in the deck, so Goblin Fire Slinger is a lot better than it normally looks. Anybody yeah. that played, was it M12 that had Bloodthirst, or was it M13? Mm, I think it was... 13, but I could be wrong. One of the two uh, yeah. ha had a Bloodthirst theme, and Goblin Fire Slinger was just like a key port part to those decks, and a lot of people just didn't really realize it. Mm -hmm. uh, and then it looks like we've got 
The uncommons Ooh, here, uh, Combust uh, is just a good card, and Modern as a way to kill, like Deceiver Exarch, to stop the Splinter Twin combo, although now you have Riding Volley, so it's kind of, like, I don't know why they <laughs> put this in Modern Masters. Um, Dismember is very, very important. Uh, it's just a one mana, four life, basically kill any creature. Sta staple of Modern and Legacy as well. Yeah, I feel like, even though Mental Misstep was, like, a pretty bad mistake, just like a very egregious mistake when they printed it, I think that this card also should not have seen print. Yeah, it should have been uh, like one black Phyrexian. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, it costs one one colorless mana, one black mana, and then a Phyrexian mana. Yeah, so you you had to play black to be able to cast Correct, it. Correct, yes. I mean, it, it, it even could have been like minus four, minus four or something, but between, between this and Jace during that standard time, uh, like, there were so many creatures that were just invalidated because of these cards, you couldn't play them. Not to mention that the Titans just kind of made them all bad anyways, um, since, you know, you're not going to do anything better with your mana than cast a Titan. I still think that, you know, this card is just a big offender in my book alongside Mental Misstep. Yeah, I mean, I really enjoy Dismember. In fact, I cast a lot of Dismembers during that time frame. <laughs> I mean, uh, I did too. <laughs> so, I, I, I don't feel that bad about Dismember, but it definitely was an offender. Yeah. But the only thing I should say, it should have been minus six, minus six to kill Farm Evil Titan. I disagree. <laughs> All right, let's go on to the next pack. All right. <clears throat> Maybe we'll get a sweet foil. Now, I've opened a handful of packs on my own since I like to gamble, and I haven't got anything good, so, so hopefully we'll get something here. Our foil is Sundering bad. Sundering at See what our rare is? Swans. Swans. So Swans is a combo piece. It's one of the most unique cards they've ever printed. It is. Uh, and it was part of one of the most busted decks that have ever existed uh, in Magic. Uh, the Cascade Swans deck actually dominated uh, for a bit, I guess, uh, where you would uh, be able to, all of your Cascade spells uh, would be able to hit uh, Seismic Assault. Yep. Uh, and, or, or Life from the Loam. So you could either Cascade into Assault or Life from the Loam. And with the Swans in play, and a Seismic Assault, you can just discard a land, hit the Swans for three, draw three cards. Obviously, you'll find another land, and you just turn through your entire deck. Yeah, well, it was two damage with Seismic, but yeah. Oh, yes. yeah, two damage. But yeah, basically, you just throw a land at Swans, draw two cards, one of which is definitely going to be a land, because you're playing, you know, 40-some lands in your deck. Mm -hmm. And you just get to keep repeating that process until you've drawn enough lands to just kill your opponent. And it's even seen play uh, in, in modern, uh, recently, I guess, uh, with like a with like a scred version where you could just have like a bunch of snow lands and scred it and you know draw like seven cards. Yeah, that I, seems I, pretty good. I've had that cast against me in uh, on Magic Online. Uh, swans plus scred, so yeah, it is uh, <laughs> not a good feeling. All right, so let's see what else we've got in here. So mana leak, uh, just a very good card in the format. Uh, snag Vapor as snag well. is good. Well, Aqua Strand Spider Graft is another one of the returning turning mechanics, and. Important to note, in, not in Modern Masters, is Serum Visions. And one of the reasonings that I've, I've heard is that Scry wasn't something they were going to have in Modern Masters. But I think that's kind of a bogus excuse because there are quite a few mechanics in this set where there's just like a couple cards for it. Yeah. And you even see that with Cycles. Like there's one Ley Line, the White Ley Line. There's two commands, Primal Command and Cryptic Command. So like just throwing something in because it needs to needed to be printed, I think is like worthwhile to have it in the in, in here. Like it's a ten dollar card. You even see that with the rares though too. You see Daybreak Coronet and Splinter Twin when there's yeah. no support for those cards at all in the set. So yeah. <laughs> uh, it, it definitely seems like a bogus reason to not print it. I, I really suspect we're going to see it in some upcoming sets. I hope it's in in Origins. Yep. All right, so let's take a look at the rest. Dread Drone. Another dismember and a wrecking ball. This, this, and a Tezzeret's Gambit. This would be a very good pack to have for your sealed deck. Yeah. In <laughs> fact, I actually played against Miley Cyrus on Moto, and she really wrecking balled me. <laughs> she just absolutely destroyed me with that card. No. All right. Next pack. All right. <laughs> uh, I can't believe you just did a Miley Cyrus pun. <laughs> Got to keep them in reserve. You I never guess. Know. And our foil is. Copper Carapace. Didn't even look like a foil. The artifact's weird. Yeah. And our rare is Guile. So that a is Street Fighter action. Yeah, it's my favorite. My favorite Street Fighter Magic card. Right behind, uh, I don't know. 
can. <laughs> yeah, I don't know if there's any more. I'm nah. sure people can let us know in the comments. Uh, I played a fair bit of Guile actually during uh, Lorwyn Block it, with the uh, Pickles deck. So. Yeah, fair enough. So we see another Bounce Land here. Uh, Glass Dusk Hulk. Uh, good card recycling. It's also sweet in like the blue white artifact deck. It was it was a that was actually a constructed card uh, with the Time Steve deck. I uh, qualified for U.S. Nationals that year playing the Open the Vaults <laughs> Time Steve deck. Sweet. Did you glass glass dust Hulk some people? I hulked a lot of people. Nice. It's very good. Uh, so we've got Gut Shot here, which has been moved down to a common. So there's going to be a lot of Gut Shots. That's so good. I, I foresee a lot of X ones like Smoke Raider dying a lot yep. to Gut Shot. Uh, and then we have Mirror Enforcer, also down in a common, uh, to go along with our affinity team if we're trying to beat down with our effects. Frogmite, um, Mirror Enforcer, though. Yep. Those were the days. Seven mana, four fours. All right, let's see what we can tabulate out of this pack. So we've got a Palaka Worm. Okay. Which is probably one of the best uncommons in the set. It feels like outside of the... Like blue white artifact deck being aggressive, everything else is just glacially slow. Yeah, Block Worm is just guaranteed value on a giant body. Um, it was it was a pretty sweet card when it came out, and it's still sweet. Like, yep. Not right. much else to say. It's some money. The opposite. <laughs> All Sun's Dawn. I guess if you're in like a five color deck, then you can use it to rebuy five cards. It's a really awesome card for cube decks. That it is. You can play some sweet cube decks and all sums dawn back a bunch of spells. Especially things that are like, you know, multicolored like this member. You know, play that in your cube deck and it is a black card you can get back. Yep, it is a black card as well as, uh, you know, if you have two black-white cards, you can target one as the black card, target one as the white card. Absolutely. Um, especially goes well if you have Cruel Ultimatum in your deck. <laughs> yes. We all like doing that. <clears throat> See here, anything else? Uh, Burst Lightning uh, is a common. Glenhawk Idol. Uh, it's also very good. It's a Vapor Snag. Vines of the Vastwood. Uh, for those of you who enjoy infecting people, here's where you can get your hands this on is, some vines. This is a good Tom Ross pack. There's a Vines of the Vastwood and an Apostle's Blessing. That's true. That is true. we got a Rusted Relic. There he is. Metalcraft theme. Cytoplast Rootkin is actually very good, and it, it, it was a rare. It has been downgraded to an uncommon, mm -hmm. and it's just a 4 mana 4-4 four, four with upside. Yeah, it's basically the classic green 4-mana four 4-4 four, four that has a little, like, ability that can be good, uh, but just is good anyway just by being virtue of being a 4-mana four 4-4. Four, four. Yeah, and now he's an uncommon, whereas he was a rare. Yep. So, and th this was actually a pretty popular casual card. It's very good in commander decks. Um, so I'm excited that it's reprinted as an uncommon, makes it a little more accessible. As does Plax Claster Frogling, which is very, very good. Yeah, that card is great. Man, this card's real good. This pack is real good. <laughs> that, was, that was a good pack. Not money-wise, but just... Uh... Yeah, if we were trying to build a sealed deck. Yeah. I wouldn't mind having that pack as one of my packs. Uh, and a sealed foil. Hikari Twilight Guardian. Okay. Used to be a rare. Now it's an uncommon. Just goes along with the Spirit Arcane theme. Just blinks it. Yep. Just a way to save it. Blink Moth Nexus. Reprint from Mon the other Modern Masters. It's a great card. Goes well with Ink Moth Nexus in the Affinity deck. It does. We do have Sign of the Wild, which was a rare and is now a common. Yep. <laughs> so for he that, really he he took a wild leap down in uh, in rarity. He did. He fell quite a bit in rarity, but I think it's genius for them to make this guy a common, uh, as it's just the centerpiece of a deck. Like there's a bunch of cards that create tokens in addition to all the Eldrazi spawn. So this guy could just be like a six six for three a lot of the time. I love the fact that he is. Uh, a three mana card that used to be a rare that's just the token off of Voice of Resurgence. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Man, they that don't make them like they used to. They don't make them like they used uh, we to. We do have Sombra Hover Guard for the Affinity deck, uh, Skyreach Manta for the five color deck. We do have all the Karoos. Uh It's just a great five five flyer. Uh, there's that Alloy Mirror at Common. It's pretty sweet. Another Gruel Turf. And then Bestial Menace. Yep. No, but I mean. This is just a good value card. You get three creatures for five mana. It actually saw play in standard for a little for a little while during its time, in standard. Yeah, it's just a, it's just a good value card. It kind of goes along the incremental growth, incremental blight style of card, where it's mm -hmm. like just five mana for some value. That's about it. It's nothing too flashy, but just goes, it goes well with this guy too, right? It does go well with sign of the wild. 
gro gets grown by the snakes. Let's see what else we got. Let's open something sweet in this pack. I would like to. So far, we've got a bunch of duds. I mean, Blink Moth Nexus isn't bad, but. Stop duddling it up. Foil Rampant Growth. That's actually a good common to have a foil of. Yeah. And a Hellkite Charger. So, I mean, all these cards are just. They're playable cards. Yeah. This guy is just a dragon. Like, is it 5-5 five, five, Flying Haste for 6 mana? <laughs> yeah. I mean, he is a sweet dragon, but he is still just a dragon. Yep. Let's see what else we got in here. Cloud Elemental. It's an elemental. Goes along with our theme. Fairy Mechanist for the Affinity deck. Dark Steel Dark Citadel's Steel. Yeah. back as a common. Eldrazi Temple moved down to an uncommon, uncommon from a rare. So definitely a bit easier to get your hands on some now. And it's... Pretty sweet that they, this card is in the set as an uncommon, because if you happen to open like an Emrakul, then you can just aggressively take this and draft and just cast them real early. Yeah, it actually gives you a chance to be able to like cast a card like Emrakul. A lot of times you take a sweet card like that and then you're like, how am I going to ever get to 15? Yeah. Uh, and having access to like temples and uh, Eldrazi spawn tokens and things like that is, is going to help you get there. Yeah, the other thing that's real sweet for this card in the set is that Ulamog's Crusher is also in the set at common. Mm -hmm. So. Eight mana is a lot. This helps you get there. Yeah, eight mana is a lot. Eight, it is an eight eight. Eight mana is a lot, but annihilator is also a lot. As a as a hard I one hate to beat. That mechanic. All right, we got drooling Grudian, and then an Orsoft Basilica that goes along with our Ghost Council. That's the best of the bounce lands right there. Is it? No, but yeah, it is. All right, let's <laughs> see what else we've got. It's also important to note that I believe these Modern Masters boxes only have twenty four packs in them. Uh, the normal 36. So we're running out of time. Let's get something sweet. All right. Don't fall asleep on me. Probably will if we keep opening cards like that. Yeah. Although I will say, Narcolepsy has actually seen con some constructed play. It, it did actually see constructed play, yeah. In the, it was in the blue green Genesis Wave deck. And it was there because it was just the cleanest answer to Goblin Guide. <laughs> Yeah, those, uh, oh, there we go. Speaking of which, all right, so there's some money, although I wouldn't be too happy to open it in a draft or a sealed pool because it just actually does nothing. There's like, I think Splinter Twin is the only beneficial creature enchantment in the, in, in the set. The rest of them are all detrimental that you want to put on your opponent's creatures. All right, so you're going to put a Splinter Twin on your Aether Snipe, and then you're going to Daybreak Horn Edit. You get to attack and also make an Aether Snipe to block, to bounce their guys. Sweet. I guess great. You could also put Narcolepsy on your creature and then Daybreak Coronet and then untap the creature so you can attack. Yeah. <laughs> you have to have a way to untap it, but... I guess. All right, let's see what else we got. But this is a good card. Daybreak is a good card for Modern, though. Yeah, it's... it's, it's the, the Boggle stack. I mean, it, it was like $40 beforehand, so it's worth, yeah. it's worth putting some more out there. Let's see. Anything else of note here? I like the card Sickle Ripper just because I can say Sick Rip when someone draws one. That's true. Sickle, sickle Rip. Uh, World Hard Phoenix used to be a rare, and yep. it's now uh, an uncommon. And it's actually pretty sweet because you can just play it from your graveyard for Wooburg, and it's a 4 4. Goes well with your Awesome's Dawn 5 color deck. Yeah, just get a bunch of these. Yep, which we do. So. We do. I'm really glad that they put those back in on top of the fact that there isn't any, like, land destruction in the set because it'd be yeah, real awkward if there was just like, like fulminator mage and it's just like avalanche yeah. riders and goblin ruin blast it's just like full yeah. of them it'd be real awkward right. uh, we got a fire slinger Boo. and a battle grace angel Boo. i mean card's great it's just like a mini bane slayer it's bane slayer and limited maybe even better in some situations but yeah uh generally speaking a little bit worse but yeah it is it is basically a bane slayer angel so it's, it's a pretty sweet card for uh sealed or draft absolutely also, it's an angel. You can never go around with angels. Uh, we do have a tribal flame. So is Malak of the Dawn. <laughs> yeah, and a sun lance. Uh, good vampire, removal. Vampire Lacerator for an aggressive vampire deck. Yep. Uh, Smash the Smithereens, another good reprint. Yeah, that card is actually starting to get kind of expensive for a common. Yeah. Sphere of the Suns for your five color awesomeness. And then Darksteel Axe, which is perfect in the blue white affinity deck. Just very aggressive. It's like a little mini cranial plating, not quite as good, but still, yeah. still does work. And they can't kill it. Yeah. All right. I'm ready to open some money. Show me the money. Show me the money. Let's see what we got here. There it is. Foil Orzov Basilica. That's the That's best the foil. Gate. 
That's the f the best foil we've opened so far. It's I guess it's Orzov. It's a Basilica. I mean, now we just need like an Orzova, the Church of Deals, and a God of the Shrine, and we're great. Ooh, that's that was Norn. All right, that is the best one we've opened so far. And this helps us cast it. It's great. Uh, Elish Norn is. I mean, it's just insane. It's, it yeah. sees play in Legacy. Uh, it doesn't see very much play in Modern a little because bit. there's not a good enough way to cheat it into play like you can in Legacy with Reanimator Show and Tell. There, there is the way that people cheat it into play in Modern is gifts and given for Elish Norn and Unburial Rites. Mm -hmm. Your opponent's forced to place both of them in your graveyard, and then you can Unburial Rites the Elish Norn. Uh, that's actually really good against a lot of strategies in Modern. Uh, the only problem is there isn't really a great home for that kind of a, a deck. Um, yeah. There's there's like the blue white Tron decks or some Gifts Rock decks, but neither of them have really performed that well. Yep. All right, let's see what else we got in the pack. I will say that Elish Norn is my favorite cube card, my actual favorite cube card. Yeah. I love that card. Fair enough. So definitely one of the favorite, one of my favorite art in all of Magic. Oh, uh, one of the best arts of all time too. Alloy Mirror, Boiler Works, Clean Dias, Agony Warp. So if we had this pack and a sealed. We would already have two bounce lands to go along with our Elish Norn. That is value right there. We got to ramp, to ramp it up. One thing about the bounce lands is like they don't help you ramp because like you you end up with the same amount of mana, uh, but they do help you hit a higher amount of mana over the course of the game. Yeah. Because it's two Consistent mana for land one drops. land. Yep. Consistent land drops. Yep. All right. Let's see. Ooh, crummings. Foil Sphere of the Suns. Okay, that's not, that's not a, a terrible rare. one. All right, that one. Can be long forgotten. Yeah, I don't. I, I, I've already. <laughs> I already don't remember what we just opened. So, uh, yeah, long forgotten. I don't even know how to pronounce it's it. It's getting a little stinky. I'm not yeah. sure. <laughs> uh, Thrumming Bird is unique. Yes, uh, it's a very unique ability uh, with the proliferate, and it's been moved from an uncommon to a common, which is pretty relevant. Thrumming Bird's a fun card. So there aren't any infect cards in the set to be able to kill your opponents for proliferate like you could during the Scars of Mirrodin block and limited. But there are graft is a mechanic, so being able you to can, proliferate with a bunch of graft creatures in play is pretty. You can also proliferate your Sphere of the Suns that you open as a foil in this exact same pack. Combo. As a combo. All right, we've got Kozlex Predator Thief of Hope is back as a common instead of an uncommon. It's just a super value. Goes along with our long forgotten Go High. <laughs> I already forget. I, I'm already. I already forgot it. it. So yeah. this this pack had double Sphere of the Suns and double Elemental Servants. Great. Man, we're cooking with gas. Plus, we have Thrumming Bird to, to power up our spheres. Woo! Power up both of them. Uh, that is a pack right there. All right, this box needs. I'm ready for this box to redeem itself. Yeah, so far I'll we, take have a foil we have rare. an Elish Norn and a bunch of blanks. I'll take a foil rare or a foil mythic. That's not either of those. Nope, it is certainly not. It's Instill Infection. Uh, a fun card. Ooh, there we go. All right, we got a Bob. Yeah. Oh, Bobby. Bobby G. So, do you prefer this art or the original art? Uh, I think I have to prefer the original just on uh, old time's sake. But I will say that this art is phenomenally good. So yeah. it, is, it is great. Like, from an art standpoint, this art's probably better, but I still like playing with the original Dark Confidence. I like the original art, but I prefer the new frame because I like the little hologram at the bottom. Okay. I think, like, the original cool. art and the new frame would be cool. So let's get a mock up. Yeah, someone, someone get that done. Let's see what else we got here in the pack. So Scatter the Seeds. This card is great. Yeah. And it goes along well with Avatar of the Wilds. Is there one in here? There's not. So yeah, this card is amazing. Uh, unfortunately, it's not as good as Sprout Swarm, but not many cards can be. No. <laughs> um, but yeah, it gives us three sapling tokens. The card's awesome. I like that there's a telling time in the pack. Certainly got a lot worse with the printing of... Uh, Anticipate. Anticipate, <laughs> yep. Yep. Let's see here. Anything else interesting? Tashnar Swordsmith. Although there's not very much equipment. Oh, th there's actually quite a bit of, e of equipment in this set. Uh, and the, but the majority of it is just like the really awkward graft ones. Or not graft, but uh, living weapon ones. Okay. Uh, New Phyrexia. So this isn't so much that you're getting like just this plus a, a piece of equipment. You're actually getting this like plus another creature. Which I think is actually really good. Yeah, that is pretty good. Yeah, this guy might actually just be much better than I thought. You know what else is pretty sweet? What? Wrecking Ball. Miley Cyrus. Another one? Nah, I'm, not, I'm gonna reference it every time I see a, a Wrecking every Ball. Every time? I gotta hope we open a Wrecking Ball in every remaining pack. Uh, I hope not. 
Ooh, that's a that's a germ token. That's a germ token. Can we rip that up? <laughs> there's there's a superior germ token on the market. Blades of Bellis Vale. Yeah, oh, that's, a, that's, a, that's a pretty bad one. Prickles Recall. That's a okay. good one to get. That is a good one, yeah. I, I'm actually glad they, they reprinted this. Um, it was pretty awkward for Hercules Recall to be like a $10 or $12 card before. Yeah, it was actually getting kind of hard <laughs> to find them. It was only in 10th edition and some older sets. Mm -hmm. uh, especially on Magic Online, it was actually at one point upwards of like 50 or 60 tickets on Magic Online. Yeah, so. originally in Antiquities, which isn't on Magic Online. so. Yeah, so uh, Hercules Recall is a good way to send them all back for your affinity opponent. Uh, not a whole lot of decks that want to play this kind of card, but there are some, like uh, Merfolk can play Hercules Recall as kind of like Blue Tron and decks like that. Yep. Uh, let's see, we've got Mana Leak, Blood Ogre for our Bloodthirst mechanic, if you will. Uh, Repeal is as a common. I actually like the new art. It does look pretty I sweet. believe this is the, the dual deck art. Okay. Don't quote me on that one. Vines of Vast War. Already did. Frogmite, another Rusted Relic. Oof. So we have a Dispatch to go along with our Metalcraft theme, which is great. Celestia Guild Mage, just a very good card. This is a limited bomb. Yeah, that card is just takes over limited games like no other. And then we also have an Overwhelm, which is just like a should, bad overrun. It should just really be called Underwhelm. Yeah. I also dislike that it doesn't give Trample. Yeah, if it gave Trample, the card would be great. But without the ability to give Trample, it's, it's Underwhelm. It really is. I feel like it should be an instant. That'd be cool. This would be a much better defensive card than offensive card as an instant. Yeah, I think you, that it could play both roles. I think that you know, like if you're convoking the seven mana spell, like how many guys do you really have that you're attacking with at that point? Like one or two. I'd rather block and then convoke them to to defend. Or attack and wait to see how they block and then cast it if you need to. For sure. All right. Let's see if we can open some more awesome germ tokens. Tilt. Let's see what we got here. Ah! All right, it just kind of fell out. Fell out. <laughs> sure. We've got yeah. a foil Tezzeret the Seeker. It's not. It's not the mythic that I would have asked for. Ew. Yeah, that's, that's pretty. Cool. That's an ugly one. Uh, it's not the mythic that I would have asked for, but it is it's a still mythic. real awesome. Yeah, Tezzeret the Seeker is a pretty sweet card. Um, used to be a mainstay in vintage. I don't know if people still play it in vintage anymore, but not so much. Uh, but it can still. It does still see, see some play every now and then. I think it's probably better in Legacy. Uh, in the blue-black Tesseret deck, you actually play some of those uh, to help find your Thopters and whatnot. Um, but I also think that it's very good in this limited format because of the living weapon. So like, you, yeah. you can you just have a bunch of artifact creatures in your deck that aren't really artifact creatures. So I think that's really cool. Yeah, that is pretty sweet. Tesseret actually is a pretty good Planeswalker. It, it, it never really saw that much play, but it does have actually really powerful abilities. Yeah. And the Puppeteer Click, this is just a very good blue-black blue uh, pack. Puppeteer Click is prob... I don't, I don't want to say it's my favorite card from the Lorwyn era, but it's definitely one of my favorite cards. And it's a surprisingly like valuable card, too, that you wouldn't expect because of how good it is in Commander. Mm -hmm. uh, it's just it's just an awesome card in Commander when your opponents are playing these giant creatures. And they're all dying all the time. Yeah, they're all dying all the time. Why not bring them back on your side for a go-around? And then do it again. Yep. Do so you hear anything else of note? Another gut shot. Ashenmore Gouger. So this is just a very good card if you're in red black, just a three mana four four. Can't block, but I mean who's blocking when you're playing three mana four fours? Not me. Uh, and then Tumble Magnet. Alright. It's well, another good one to proliferate with our thrumming bird. Yeah. Well we've got a foil Tezzeret. That's pretty nice. I wonder if we can get anything else. So our foil this time is... Oh, a CVM favor. That goes, that goes with our Tezzeret right there. We got, little, we got a little bit of a deck going. And we get a Sunforger. Sunforger is a sweet card for Commander. Um, it is. It, it, is a, it is a pretty cool card. It lets you search through your deck and, and do some fun things. But uh, in terms of you know actual modern, I don't, I don't think Sunforger is where it's at. Uh, I might be dating myself a little bit. Okay. But uh, Sunforger was actually... Uh, a key piece to a standard deck back in the Ravnica era called Fungus Fires, Ooh. where you would use Vitugazi the City Tree as the only way to generate creatures, and you would use Sunforger to just play the burn that was in your deck. So you had cards like Lightning Helix, Urza's Rage, things of that nature, and you would just kill people with 
Sunforger and Vintidazi. Worst case, cool. worst case scenario, like yeah, make some five ones. Yeah. You always attack with a five one. Just kind of cool, kind of a cool deck. Just kind of awkward to you know have Sunforger in your deck and no actual creatures. But <laughs> what are you gonna do? I mean, I've played Loxon Warhammer with with Care Keep being my main main <laughs> source of making some some guys. So. Oh. All right, let's see what else we got here. A little Squirter action, Aether Snipe, Rusted Relic, Spectral Procession. That's a sweet one. This card's real good. Yes, it is. And it goes along with your... Well, it's just three guys. Avatar, the It's just three dudes. Seriously? Yeah, that's three it. Dudes? That's it. Yeah, it's very good. And then we have Incandescent Soulstoke. Used to be a rare. Yeah, which I was going to say. This used to be a rare. A bit of an elemental theme in the deck. Uh, it's kind of cool because Horde of Notions is also in the deck, too. Which oh, is that's cool. Sweet. You can, you can combo set. wombo it up. Yep. All right. Let's see what else we got. Yeah. Right. Come on, foil Tarmo. No, nope, it's fortify. Not quite the same. Another, Another swans. We are we are swanning it up. We are flush on swans. Anything else? Another smash. Eugenic it's eugenic. Yeah. It is uncommon. Wasn't it common before? Uh, it was a common. Yeah. Yeah. So, so they gut that. shot went down. This one went up. It's interesting. Eventual Rebirth, just a good card for like the five color value decks. Uh, just be able to kill something and rebuy a sweet card. It's what we call an old country two for one right there. Can't go wrong with those. Old country six mana regrowth two for one. Yep. I mean, I'd still play it. All right. Ooh. All right. Sickle Ripper. Yeah, man, that looked like a bob. It did. It was a foil for one and a black. And we got a wildfire. Okay. So have you ever played wildfire before? I have. It's fun for you, not for your opponent. That's true. <laughs> uh, I played Wildfire quite a bit. Uh, back in the day, there was a deck popularized by uh, fellow Star City writer Adrian Sullivan called yeah. Eminent Domain, where you would use cards like Annex to take your opponent's lands. And then sack them. And then cast Wildfire and sacrifice your opponent's lands. But it also used Spectral Searchlight. And back in the day, when I was a young child, you could take Mana Burn. Yeah. So you would give your opponent mana with Spectral Searchlight in their end step, and they would be forced to use it or take mana burn. Yeah, it was actually a way some of like some of those decks would actually kill their opponent by just searchlighting them. Three one turns. One damage a turn. They got take spells. It. Nope, you're dead. Let's see what else? Mana leak. This card be I see this card a lot, and this card is just very good. Yeah, Glenhawk Idol, well, I mean it was insane and scars limited as well. Was it an uncommon there? Or was it a common? I think it was a common. Yeah, I'm sure. It's just gross. There's, there's the crusher. There's all crusher. Big Daddy. Surprised that's the first time we've seen him, considering he is just a common. I have a feeling he's a mythic common. Okay, you know there's yeah. always like a few commons that are you just don't see very often. Yep. I think that's it. Uh, so we have Carpoos and Strider. So there is a, you know, the cycle of hate cards in the, the set. Combust, um, Deathmark, yep. Flash Freeze, things like that. The other green one just gets a 3-4 that can't be countered. That can't be targeted by blue or black spells. And... I'm just kind of underwhelmed. Yeah, I mean, it is slightly better than a hill giant. That's usually fine and limited, but, mm -hmm. um, yeah, it's not, not that great. Where, where's Autumn's Veil when you need it? Or just, you know, a card like this, especially at Uncommon, I expect it to be something that you're going to take, like, mid-pack uh, as just a solid sideboard card, and that's just not what Carpus and Strider is. Yeah, I mean, it could just be a main deck card, though. I mean, just a Maybe, yeah, big just, body. Maybe, just a 3-4 for four, 4. They should have brought back Great Sable Stag. Maybe. Stag them up. As an uncommon? Yeah. I don't think it would have been that bad. Yeah, I think it would have been fine. Def it's definitely better than that card. How much more, I'm not sure. Deep of Hope? Well, it's not bad. No, that, I'd like to open, that stole I, my hope of... I'd like to open a real good foil, though. Stole my hope of opening a good outside foil. Outside of this Tesseret. Ooh, bam, bam, bam. Sweet. Ulamog action. All right, that's a good one. We, that we, is. we stepped our game up a bit. Too bad it wasn't a foil Ulamog. I will put this one up here with these other bad ones. Yeah, I already had forgotten that we had that one. Let's see what else we've got here. Another, Another crusher. crusher, along with this Ooh. is this is just a great pack, right? Yeah, that that's just a phenomenal pack to open in Ulama again. But even this, you just sack this guy. Yeah. Man. We we opened the nut Ulamog pack. Oh, and it had Ulamog in it with a nest invader. Wow. What a what a delight! The pack's real good. Yeah. <laughs> Jeez. Speaking of good, Ulamog's pretty good. Yeah, just a giant Eldrazi. 
I think the Annihilator is just too good of a mechanic, to be yes. honest. Yeah. Um, it's a mistake, which is why I am just, I don't know, I just think it's a mistake. <laughs> it was definitely a mistake. It definitely is not a fun, it's not fun to play against Annihilator. Um, mm. Just knowing, especially Emrakul, just getting six permanents wrecked. Like, you can beat an Ulamog sometimes, but... Emrakul sometimes. I don't know. <laughs> he is indestructible. It's true. All right. A little flame connection. And a Niv Mizzet. The Fire Mind. The Fire Mind. The OG Niv. Just the OG Niv. Um, it's a great card. He's ping. Draw card. There's a lot of sweet combos with this card in Commander. Uh... Probably a general that you kill on sight if someone plays it. Yeah. Bad things will probably happen if you don't. Probably. All right. Anything else in this pack? Vines. Electrolyze. So another reprint. Great card all around. Mortipod. Mortipod. Probably my second favorite living weapon equipment. What's your favorite? Is it Batter Skull? Better be Batter Skull. It's sickle Slicer. Is it? Yeah. <laughs> Mine's Necro Pouncer, so. Necro Pouncer? Just kidding. A sickle Slicer with a germ on it? Yep. Just the real germ? Yeah, I, I really like Mortipod. One of my favorite standard decks of all time was like the Cobblade deck that played one Feast and Famine, one Mortipod. Just, yeah. God, I love that deck. Sack your Squadron Hawks. I, things. I killed a lot of Lotus Cobras with this card. Yeah. <laughs> Mortipod is actually, yeah, I love Mortipod too. It was a really fun card. Really frustrating to play against Mortipod though. It was, yeah. it was, sometimes it was really hard to beat that card. That is correct. All right. Let's see if we can get some more money here. And then Electrolyze is one of my favorite modern cards, so sweet to see that in the pack. A lot of value. All right, come on. Foil Goyf. Wow, that's a good one. Wow, that actually is really good. Holy. Yeah, it's quite a bit of money. Yeah, Spell Skite's a great card, and a Foil Skite is just as even better. Like. All right. All right, and then, and then a Stinker. A little <laughs> overrun action. Just so worse than Overrun, basically. Yeah. Just much worse than Overrun. I'll still play it, though. Not going to lie. Yeah. That Foil Spellskite's awesome, though. Spellskite's one of the defining creatures of Modern. Um, and it's just not, done nothing but skyrocket in price. You know, it used to be like $2 yeah. when it was in Standard. And then, like, started creeping up to 10 and now it's like, you know, 20s or whatever. It's like, actually, like, the, the Modern Masters version are 20. Regular ones are like 25. Foil ones are like 50. Yeah. What are you going to do? Pretty sweet one. Open it. Foil. Uh, I like to play Cavern of Souls and name Horror, and then watch the horror on my Splinter Twin opponent's face. You know what else is a horror, though? What? Phyrexian Revoker. Really? It is. That's nice. I have, I, I have actually had Cavern naming Horror happen to me a lot in Legacy. Fair enough. Wayfarer's Bobble. That common. A little Remand. They're using the dual deck art for Remand, so... And I like it. <clears throat> I, like I like it, too. I like it a lot. Uh... It's great that it's reprinted again because it was like over fifteen dollars at one point before they reprinted it the first time. Yeah. And then it still stayed around ten dollars, and now it's down a little bit. That's like wow. Those are three great uncommons. Yeah, those are just really good. Uh, <laughs> I, I don't think remand is as great in limited as it is in constructed. No, it's definitely not. Uh, but I still think it's a fine card. But both of these cards, Oblivion Ring and Plax Castor Frogland, are just absurd. In Oblivion Ring's just always been an amazing limited card. All right. It's really good at answering spell scope. So this hasn't been a bad box so far. No, it started like, out... How many mythics have we gotten? Three? Three and a foil mythic? Three and a foil. You know, it started out pretty bad, but it's actually, it's really uh, picked up a lot. We've actually opened some pretty good value. Got three and a foil mythic so far. And a great foil rare. And we still we got, got like four packs left. Yeah, we got some time. I wouldn't mind a Tarmogoyf. I wouldn't mind a Mendelian. How about a foil alloy mirror? I'd mind that a bit. And then Shadow Mage Infiltrator. So we've got a Bob and a Johnny Magic. Yep. Works for me. You just need an Avalanche Riders or a, you know, Sylvan Safekeeper or something to really get Ollie the party Rage. started going. Yeah. All right. Get the party going. Anything else in the pack? Worth noting. Ooh, Cranial plating. plating. Yeah, there we go. It's up to uncommon. A little action. A little yep. Scargan Firebird. Bloodthirst. Yeah, being a bloodthirst rebuy it, I guess. This card actually seems fine. I think if you ever just get to play it as a six six flyer for six, that seems pretty sweet. Yeah. It's not nothing nothing too flashy, but it's And then cranial plating is one of the defining cards in modern. Yeah, we won't talk about that. I just like that deck. Oh, I actually do I actually like that deck. 
Do you like Wings of Bellis Vale? I like it more than I like, uh, where is it? Blades of Bellis Vale. Yeah. I think Wings is, is superior to Blades in the Bellis Vale department. That's fair. How about Necro Skitter? Uh, there's another word I would use that sounds a lot like Skitter <laughs> to describe <laughs> that card. But I won't say what it is. Yeah, we'll leave this. We'll leave that one at home. Yeah, you can you can work that one out yourself. Thoughtcast is great. That's a great one. Another Firebird, another Gambit. We also have Pillory the Sleepless. Ooh, that's I didn't know that card was in this set. That's actually I love Pillory the Sleepless. It's one and of my favorite cards. And it's new art even. I like Pillory. It was a great card. It's just pacifism that kills them. Yeah, it's true. Yeah. That's exactly what it does. That's exactly what it, just it is. Says it but right here. I, I loved playing like Pillory, Ghost Council, all these just like stupid little cards that drain them out slowly over the course of the game. That's fun just, magic right there. Just want to make it as miserable as possible for your opponents. Until they lose, yep, absolutely. I mean, I guess I can respect that. All right. This one, and then there's one more pack, so let's get a good one here. Lore Scale Codal. Yeah, that's our foil. It's a, Actually, that's a pretty good card for Commander and, and stuff. It's, it's, a, it's a solid uncommon. Yeah. It's not bad and limited too. Like it's just going to be a three three the next turn. Yep. If you ever, you know, if you happen to be able to play like Tesseract Gambit or something, you just get pretty big. Oh, Big Daddy Horde of Notions. There we go. That card is awesome. It's definitely part of the uh, uh, the combo. The the it wasn't a combo deck, but part of the elemental stack, yep. which uh, has actually been seen a little play in modern. It has, yeah. Um, the sweet thing that you would use with this is Bloom Tender. So Bloom Tender gives you Wooberg when you have this guy in play, and then you can use its ability conveniently to activate. To just cast something out of your graveyard, like Nameless Inversion, yeah. over and over and over. Yeah, you, you can cast Inversion over and over again. Uh, you could also do things like cast Crib Swap or whatever. There's a lot of like good elemental spells that aren't creatures that you can just use that with. Yep. And I believe you can. With this, you can do the evoke cost. Like you can, you can choose to play something for evoke instead of its normal when you play it out of here. So if okay. you, so if you wanted to just like pay five to evoke your Moldrifter and draw two, it goes back to the graveyard and you can do it again. Hmm, that's pretty cool. Uh, scatter the seeds. There's brute force. A little brute force action. The, the red giant growth. It's just a literal giant growth. Yeah. Doesn't see much play, but it's still it's, pretty sweet. It is a sweet one. Uh, Bloodshot trainee. It's an uncommon. It's a combo with that brute force. Oh man, it is. <laughs> it also combos with Dark Steel Axe. Mm -hmm. All right, so this is our last pack. Okay. What do you think it's gonna be? Splinter Twin. Why would you do that? All right, let's do the foil first. What do you think the foil is gonna be? Uh, I think it's going to be a foil <sighs> rusted relic. Nope. Goblin, Goblin War Paint. paint. All right. All right. So you said Splinter Twin? Yeah, what are you going to say? I think it's going to be Timer Boy. Okay. We Precursor Golem. Precursor Golem. Card's great. I'm not going to deny it. It's really good with that foil and still infection that we had way long time ago. <laughs> you can uh, yeah, it's just three, three, draw three, three cards. Three, three, threes for five mana. Uh, a removal spell <sighs> takes care of all of them, like a lightning bolt, um, which we... Didn't see a single one of in this box yet. No? <laughs> it is uncommon. Um, but yeah, like if they don't have a removal spell for it, it's three, three, five, threes for five Nine minutes. power for five minutes is a lot. It's a, a certainly better value than uh, Bestial Menace. Yeah. Yeah. And it's colorless. You can play it any deck. Let's see what else is in the pack here. Yeah, Burst Lightning. That's a good answer to that card. Yeah. So there's Bone Splinters. And Other World Journey? Yep. Not really. <laughs> It'll come back and. Uh, oh, Vines of the Vast Wood, Core Duelist. We've got two Procession. Plus but, a Sigil but no Blessing. Lightning Bolt. This is pretty good on your Precursor Golem, right? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Just pop him. That's, that's, that's a Wombo combo right there. Yeah. That'll get him dead. Well, let's take a glance over what we got in our box here. So we've got a Foil Spellskite, a Foil Tesseret, a Bob and Elishnorn, and an Ulamog. Yeah. Uh. Yeah. Alongside a Blink Moth Nexus and a Daybreak Coronet, as far as cards that are worth some money. Mm -hmm. We got a foil Orzhov Basilica. Yeah, it's just actually worth that. nothing, right? Yeah, we can get that guy out of there. <laughs> so yeah, I, I actually I'd say this box is not that bad. I mean, hit, hitting the foil rare along with the mythic with these three is pretty good. Yeah, and we also had a couple of like. Other cards that are okay, like Popsir clicks a fine one, Hercules Recall is a good one, uh, yeah. the two Swans, 
things like that. So we, we hit some reasonable cards as well. Uh, foil, Orzov, Basilica. Uh, we really made out. Okay. Yeah, I'd say the Foil, Orzov, Basilica is what pushes it over the top. Yeah, it pushes this from like, you know, X amount of value to X plus 0.25 amount of value. Yeah. And that's where I'm at. Plus we got plenty of Wrecking Balls. Yes, yeah, we did. <laughs> we did. We can uh, we can double up on our Miley Cyrus. I think we only got two Wrecking Balls, but... Mm-hmm. Two more than what we needed. Mm-hmm. Uh, so thanks for hanging out with us, guys, while we opened our Modern Masters 2015 edition box. Uh, I feel like it was a win, and we got some pretty sweet things. Uh, if you liked what you saw and in, were entertained thoroughly by BBD and I opening the product, make sure you check out some of our previous unboxings. Um... Yeah, do you have anything else? No, that's all I got. Oh, yeah, make sure you like and subscribe to the channel so that you see when we do some other unboxings. I will say I'm a little disappointed we didn't get to open one of those really weird Modern Masters boxes that have, like, oh, yeah. some sort of crazy thing, like all Mythics or all random foils or whatever. I but. feel like with our luck, we would have opened a Modern Masters box that had 24 Comet Storms in it. <laughs> that actually would have been pretty sweet. I mean, I guess. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I, I would have thought it was sweet. I don't know. Maybe that's just me. All right. Thanks, everybody, and we will see you later. Thank you.